This is inter intergalactic uh, oh, okay. nourishment here. <laughs> Just a second, can you repeat your question and I'll... Okay, I'd like a synapse of what we're actually talking about when you say reptilians, okay. aliens. Well, according to um, different sources, there are like 50 some different species out there that are that the, the earth knows about. So reptilians would be a species that's more like reptiles. Not necessarily evil or bad. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Uh, Pleiadians are from the Pleiades star system area. There's different kind of Pleiadians because um, Lyra, the planet Lyra, which has the Lyrans, or they're like a cat-like people. They came from the Pleiades, so do the Blue Pleiadians and the, the uh, Nords Pleiadians. The Nord Pleiadians are like very tall, big, uh, human looking. And um, our government fears the human looking aliens the most. Because they feel that they feel threatened more by people that don't look, uh, that look like us because they can interface with us and not be known as aliens. So our government and the world governments fear them the most because they look like humans. But And then there's also insectoids and there's greys. There's five species of greys that we know of, which are like, uh, they look more like E.T. Closer to E.T. than I can explain what they actually look like, but E.T. would be a good be close and they're very friendly most of those so and so they're all we're talking about is just many different kinds of species of aliens that are around us and the reason why they're around us now is because earth is in ascension we're headed for another evo uh, a movement in evolution within the next 200 years so we have lots of aliens watching us because we're involved with evolution. I mean, our evolution is valuable to them because we'll be able to join the the consciousness of the galaxy at that time. One more question. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, when you say aliens, <coughs> are, are, they are they inhabitants of the planets that we know of, or is something totally different? We, uh, there's no, there's... So, several different beliefs about that. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that there are people on Mars, and I believe there are some people on some of the moons, and then Saturn and Jupiter. And, but there are also many races out there in the galaxy, and they're, they're ahead of us. We're way out from the center of the galaxy, <laughs> so we've had time to... Um, go through several different changes on our planet. Whereas some of the ones at the, the center of the galaxy developed way before us because the movement out was quick, but that's millions of years quick. Are you talking about the galactic center, Alcyon? Yeah. The, the central sun. Right. Okay. So as the movement comes out, the, the species are younger. So we're a younger species. So that's what I see. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it all makes sense. But um, so is it, you say creation. And, 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 I'm still trying to get the whole. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. You it said is. Uh, third generation or third something and fourth something. What was that? The Three or four dimension. Oh, dimensions. Dimension. You said third generation. Oh, third, third dimension. dimension. Yeah, we're in the third dimension right now. Three dimensional is just what we see now, mm -hmm. what you're in now, the feeling, the touch. Mm -hmm. Fourth dimensional is not quite as solid. It, you can by will walk through walls or, or areas that are not so dense. Like, and, they're, um, and this affects how you live because when, when you can walk through walls and do things like that, your privacy level sort of goes down. <laughs> yeah, because you're walking through to somebody's room and if they're doing something then you sort of walk through keep walking so um but um 
the fourth dimension is less solid in some ways, and which is really good for some species because they like the effects of that. The, it's a lighter feeling, it's a lighter dimension, it's a closer to a spiritual dimension. As you go up through the dimensions, it becomes a little bit more like spirit. So, okay. are you done with your question? One more question. Mm -hmm. So, is there an aspiration to move from third dimension to the highest dimension, or you're just living in whatever dimension you're in? Well, there is an aspiration, um, but the aspiration for people in the third dimension is to get to the seventh dimension, which is after death, you become a spirit. So, I, and I know people talk about fifteenth dimension and. 4,000 million dimensions, but we're, but what we see is, but what we under, can possibly understand is only seven, so, <laughs> so, seven is like heaven, okay. pretty much, and the ones in between there, first dimension is, it's almost non-existent, I would think. It's a gunk. Yeah, it's, it's like gunk. Ooze. Yeah, and dimension is flat. <laughs> so, anyway, the third dimension is has all these different... Okay. The third dimension meaning, like, second dimension you could think of like plants, like mm -hmm. that kind of expression of itself. Third dimension would be the animal canyon of which um, humans think they're their top of, which is not the truth. Mm -hmm. But that's the animal, that's, I mean, which we're pretty animalistic and it seems to me the universe is forcing us to face dire circumstances to mm -hmm. evolve out of everything that we've been taught and known and to really receive the fact that our history is not very accurate and to remember that it's been written by people that have, you know, right. done all kinds of things to be able to get the words down on paper the way that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's a big step. But right now, if we can go to third to fourth <coughs> dimension, that's a big step for us. But mm -hmm. I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. I've had an understanding that there are really two layers of the fourth dimension, and one was entering into the fourth dimension where we are now where it's really causing conflict in, in the darker aspects of our species and that has a lot to do with the global and personal turbulence that we're all going through. You know, right. you like, feel like you're shedding things, you're trying to get rid of habits that don't work for you, people, relationships, everything's changing and you are different than you were, let's say, last year or two years ago. Exactly. You're evolving, but the fourth dimension, this transitional point between third and fifth, I don't know why anybody thought we'd go from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. Right. You, you know, it would have killed us. We couldn't right. take that energetically. But there are a couple of layers in the fourth dimension yes. that are going to be very turbulent until things settle down. Is this your understanding? In some ways, yeah. Because, okay, also with dimensions you have the zillion dimensions. I mean, there's life... Octaves. The, the different lifelines that go with that. Because you're living in a million lifelines, well, but you're not living in a million lifelines. You're you're living all at once, but you're living by by yourself. Does that make? I mean, it's it's so hard to explain. Are you talking about simultaneous uh, multi? Yeah. yeah. So I'm here, probably right. my love. And that has something to do with the levels of fourth dimension. Okay. Because there's so many multi-dimensional timelines, um, and you reach a certain point in that the fourth dimensional timelines where you can't go any farther without starting to get fifth dimensional energy. So that means that once you can only go to here if you're in the third dimension, move to the fourth dimension, then you can only go to there until you're in the fifth dimension and you can only go to there. It, it, it's, uh, you move up and because that's the way it has to be in order for you to exist. So. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, we, I'm coming at it from a different. My information yes, is probably. It, it's it's a little bit different, but it's it's about you know the the dimensional shifts and you know the time frame that it will take to be fully initiated into a fourth dimensional environment where there's a fifth dimensional overlay that certain individuals will be right. able to tap into. And I was given a time frame of 21 years. Yeah. But Dominic's children mm -hmm. will have if if we can keep. Dominic is pure as he is, which is very difficult. His children are going to be twice as much as he is, right. and that's the future. So it's like we have to yes, we have to keep our world alive so that these children can have children. Right. There, there's a danger in trying to keep them too pure because they will revolt. But um, 
that's the that's the hard part. Keeping them understanding where they are and what they are and you know and, and how they are, and uh, and keeping them on track for moving forward and into the light because a lot of times they'll want to not <laughs> because they peer pressure and whatever. You had the same thing when you were growing up. Um, there's all those things around them that will want to influence them. So pulling them out of that too quickly or can completely can be very devastating. So I don't think protecting him from a life of physicality is the option. What it is is about allowing Dominic to understand that he's an energetic being and he's vast and that all of our energetic fields are mm -hmm. beyond our comprehension to, to understand and to, right. to give him and cultivate that connection with his own divinity so he can live a life of physicality and bring it through him. Right. And that's, he that's, has to understand that. That's true. And if he doesn't, then that's a problem. <laughs> because, but I think he will. But it, at different ages, he'll discover more about himself. So. What do you think, Danny? Do you think he's kind of got that understanding about himself? I think he does. You know, at this um, age, yeah. I mean, if we're being three, you know, because yeah, he's, he's only three, so you know, my son, <laughs> my son is nonverbal and he's got cerebral palsy, so he doesn't walk, things like mm -hmm. that. But like mentally, you know, I know that he's got way more going on probably than I do. You know, and he's good with animals, you know, and he's good with spirit and he's dreams. probably psychic. Oh yeah, my God! Yes, he yes. and I have a really special connection. You know, it's like your son. He loves to be touched. You know, mm -hmm. he's always got to be very close to me. You know, we have a very so, special connection. So yeah, he's probably psychic. So, uh, and that means that he will understand things a little better. So, let me let me add a little bit about dimensions. So so um, basically, you're born into a certain dimension. It's it's uh, traveling to another dimension is 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 almost impossible. You can communicate with others, so Lakesh is from the fourth, but uh, you know, physically maybe it's hard for a human to be in the fourth dimension. Maybe we can get, sometimes we meet in between, if they take us on their ship, they kind of keep our dimension, uh, they, they have to bring us to the to their fourth and you know, 3.9 and they they could come down yeah. from there four point five to, to or, or to three point nine to meet us face to face, yeah. but basically, when they come here, Bashar describes that people become scared just because of the energy that goes through, mm -hmm. uh, like their presence of Sasani people. Now they are called differently, but but Sasani people, he said, every time we come through, a person who is coming to meet us, we are working. To integrate their soul and mind, basically, we are so clear. Our energy is so clear that their energy, human energy, becomes so clear. They, they integrate, and something which is hidden in human, in subconscious surfaces, and our sub subconscious is scary to to many of us. So, so people who are clear within themselves, who are clean and already kind of integrated their hidden hidden things, they. They can meet in extraterrestrials, and the ones which are so fragmented. Most of us are very fragmented. An example is, you know, we come to one group of people. We are one person. We come to another group of people. We became completely different. Like, I go to synagogue, I behave one way. I go go to a bar, I behave the other way. And mm -hmm. this is a separation. There is a lot of hidden things which we are we are not aware by to ourselves. So that when we meet extraterrestrials that all surfaces, you become one, you become integral. So that is a big explanation how, how different they are. Next thing is about the fourth dimension. They all, all of them are telepathic. Going from third to fourth is gaining telepathy. So the whole society becomes connected telepathically and that what what we are doing. The humanity evolves and it takes generations. For humanity it takes generations. They estimate it will take about 200 years and about six to eight generations to become four-dimensional. It's evolutionary step. Uh, for Sasani, it was three days. In three days, they were non-telepathic, connected together telepathically, and they evolved into next stage. So it can be very fast, it can be very slow. Um, but we are making it. Our children already have that capacity to become telepaths, and, and that's what we are doing, the whole society. And the humanity will be very different when we become telepaths. Lying is possible when you're telepathic, but it's 
way more difficult. So it's kind of going from 90% deception to 1% deception. The deception will be there, but not in that amount of, you know, deception everywhere. I mean, well, makeup is a deception. Because Haircut is a deception. Even in telepathy, you have your personal things that you do not have to reveal. Unless you want to reveal them, but a lot of times, with what I understood from Lakesh and Dizdu, is that when you meet someone, you look them in the eye and you know their intention, and you say hello, and you have an interaction. You don't have to speak, and you know how friendly, nice, what kind of mood they're in, you know. But you're not showing like all your thoughts and everything like that. But you can go that far, but you don't have to when you're just meeting people. There's a, a social telepathy and there's a an intimate telepathy. So <laughs> there it's it's a really quite a wonderful thing, so but you really can't hide your intentions mm -hmm. very well. That's the one thing you really can't hide because intention is the beginning of telepathy. It's the first thing you learn is when your heart is big you learn to know if that's a good person or a bad person right away when you meet them. Are you a good, oh, that's not a good person. You know what I mean? If you, if you call this something like tell empathy, yeah, you know, empathy, empathy, you and you can see, feel, hear, and know something about a stranger before you even speak the words. I mean, sometimes you'll right. meet somebody and you'll get the creeps, right? Right. You'll just say, my body, which does not have an ego, will tell you that there's something that's, that's right, kind exactly. of an intuition. But it's more open, and I've learned with my healing work, because I'm very strongly clairaudient, but I was getting everything at once, and I had to drop all the clairs and say, this is telepathic, and you're getting stuck in the thinking and the feeling and all that other stuff. So right. it's really, it's, it's, I don't, it's a word for how do you see, feel, and hear, and know something all at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I, that will be a good day where we can tell if somebody's yeah. an ass off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> So is that kind of a good way to start um, teaching yourself, like to pay attention to how your body reads somebody else? Yeah, is that a good that's way to part of the first it? thing. You see, the um, the heart is connected to the solar plexus in the destiny area, okay? But it, it's the shining part. It's the part that goes out. It's the love part. It's the the part that connects with everyone. And this is sort of like fuel for it. The, the solar plexus, but when it reaches the third eye, that's when it becomes truly, truly t telepathic, where you can integrate with each other. So it's a perception. It's your yeah. higher heart mind. It's how but, you know. But it's. But do you agree that most people stop here at the communication chakra? I, I know that I've I've got my own um, yeah. uh, chakra things, and the heart and the throat chakra is an extension of, of your healer and that whole cardiac solar plexus. But a lot of things need they, to be they, expressed that some people can't express, what? and and <laughs> let go that mm. a lot of people can't let go of. And therefore, they stop here and can't get to the third eye. They, they're moving up. But intention but, is important <laughs> here. So we all have difficulty saying certain things. Yes. But I know that my third eye is open. And I know yes. that this part of my pineal gland is open. And I know it comes out this way. And I know I'm working with my eighth. And I know I'm working with my ninth. And there's nothing perfect about me, asked Jana. So um, it's all about <laughs> your intention, you know. Yeah. It's all about your intention. I, I might not be great today, but I'm working at it. I'm doing my best. Hey, I'm that's right. with all of us. <laughs> We're all the same. Because nobody's perfect here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, the, yeah, one one thing is, you know, it goes without saying, but but uh, it needs to be pronounced right, right now that, you know, we are part of God and mm -hmm. the soul is big and the human body is small. And it is very much like I'm playing a computer game. The soul playing a computer game being that little human down on earth. So when the body dies, that experience goes back to God and that that spirit continues to exist, but outside of this dimension. So, so dimensions are just for the soul to come physicalize, to get experience and come back. So we, it's not the souls are in the body, it's the body is part of a bigger soul. And initially it's easy to come to come here in 3D 
and the body can fit only that much of the soul because the whole soul cannot fit in the human body. It's much bigger. It's much more sophisticated. And especially on, on Earth, we are so uh, so extreme in the experiment. It's a big experiment happening. How much can we forget and still uh, evolve? So in this Earth experiment, you know, our souls chose to forget who they are. That's the biggest difference from all extraterrestrials. In other civilizations, they come and experience physical life, physical, uh, uh, the physical mind, but they still remember that you know they are high soul, high souls just playing that game. So for the for the four-dimensional aliens, the death is not as important because they come to life remembering the past lives, remembering the experience. So. They, they are born almost adult. They, their body is small, but they, they are adult in their experience, so they behave very responsibly. And when they die, they know they will incarnate again. So for humans, uh, the memory of the past lives is cut off. The memory of, you know, of higher dimensions is cut off. So it's, it's different. Uh, so that is a basically explain so so when uh, 3d 3d uh, 3d life can fit only a little bit of the body in 4d four dimensional life you can fit much more of the spirit the, the same body is kind of more involved so our alien friends they are more advanced than we are they, and the way the body fits more of the spirit is by being more clear we are too polluted there is too much chaos in our bodies same human body on same genetics actually, same genetics on air. I have a couple children there and they are four dimensional and they feel comfortable having similar genetics. They and some others also have they have similar genetics, but they, because they are brought up in that purified crystal environment, they can fit more of the <coughs> spirit and they can live in higher dimension. So it is, um, and, and above, above fourth the physicality ends. The fifth and sixth have very little physicality. It's more like a spirit. If they want to experience something physical, they materialize, experience a little bit of physicality and go back into spirit. They don't have to live the whole life. They have, they have the body, but, but they can synthesize that body at wish. In fourth dimension, you really are born and then you live and then you die. They live typically longer. They live about three to, three to six hundred years. Typically, some much longer. And may, uh, they can do many miracles, like Yael are adv so advanced, they can be at many places at the same time. They can appear and disappear, and uh, they can connect to many other, telepath many other consciousnesses telepathically. So it's almost like being gods, but having physical body. So yeah, that's four dimension is... The specifics of four, the properties of four dimension is telepathic connection and uh, fluidity of physical experience. Uh, also, the time is different there. They can be at the same. The consciousnesses can 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 choose where in the time to be. They can be in the morning or in the evening. They have about three day period where they can focus. You can right now we are focused right here. We can think about if you know an hour from now or yesterday but we are not f fully there they can travel back and forth a few days in their time easily so their body is sort of there but they can 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 modify they can play and get the experience in a more fluid way they, they, it's like you're watching the movie like especially these days on youtube you can scroll forward and back in the movie they, they can do that naturally they don't need technology for that they can time travel within a certain period they can tra time travel very far because it kind of messes up the experience. So the gods designed that in a way that for four dimension you're allowed only to time travel a little bit, few days back and forth. But for us, it's for them they know our future about few days in the in, in the future. So so it's very handy. Sometimes they give us very nice advice about that. The future father, they it's close for, for them because they also come to their life, four dimension life, for experience. And the experience will be messed up if they know all the future. Then the whole challenge, the whole, uh, how do you call it? Uh, 
how do you call it? Well, there is a word. The challenge of you know not knowing the future is is, is important for them. Otherwise, you don't get that experience. But after all, after death, all it comes to to the soul, and uh, and um, the soul feeds on that experience. Uh, it's sort of without that physical life, there is not as much energy in the soul. So souls get uh, feed on our experiences. It's not emotions, experiences is is it is what what they gain from us from from from, from being here. Mm -hmm. And Earth is very rich in in, in uh, getting that experience. In short period of time, you get <laughs> yeah. you get a lot. So yeah, so they are they... amazed how how uh, intense and how diversified the Earth experience is. So yeah, that's true. So um, often Bashar was asked once, you know, do they have television? And he said, we don't need television. We just come and watch you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because because uh, so so we yeah, are, and it looks like it's not only through Jim and not only through Bashar. A lot of other channels confirm that you know we are the, their eyes, their minds, uh, the souls are focused and looking at what is happening here, and mm -hmm. they are getting a lot of uh, insights. And what happens here is is teaching the whole universe about about things because we do a lot of things in a new way. Because we chose to forget, because our souls are were brave enough to chose to to choose to forget who they are, and that gave a lot of new insights to the whole universe. And unfortunately, with this choosing to forget, we got into the cycle which lasts for thousands of years, where the souls get so encapsulated, so immersed in our experience, it's really hard for the whole global consciousness to get out to the higher 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 dimensional evolutional leap. We, we were supposed to do it many times and many times it failed and now it's another turn and we are borderline without external help we surely will not make it. With external help there is a good chance we will make it but again we will yeah. they have a prediction that we'll lose a lot of a lot of lives like 50 percent of lives in around 13 years from now will be lost in a big uh, upheaval. So that was well. They're announcement we heard. that to to change that too, but it, yes. that was their original prediction. While yes. we're talking about this, is any of the current events and the and the distortion um, that we're facing now? I mean, and, and I don't want to sound judgmental here, but for the sake of delineating what I'm trying to say, <laughs> is that there are there are light energies really trying to overcome the dark energies from some very dark humans that have spent a great deal of time and energy and money to harm us in every single way possible, including oh, yes. our children. Yes. So without resorting to violence, what I want to know is how much of our karmic debt has... This is what my group is dealing with. We've been dealing with some things coming from Atlantis and Egypt, mm -hmm. and they've been pointing us in directions, and we're trying to understand if there's something that we're supposed to go back and handle at that time and clear, okay. so that it would collapse those consequences. Some of us were in Atlantis, some of us were in Lemuria. I mean, we're vast, so it's not like coming to Earth was our first existence. You exist. Right. You know. Exactly. Existence never ends. So our, our conversation has been more about going to cause, like we do in a healing. I mean, if you have a problem that exists in your body, it probably existed out here for a long time. That's cause. You fix the origin of something. So we want to do the same thing with our piece of the past. Right. So has, has that ever come up in any of your discussions? The, the one thing that does come up in the discussion is that Lakesh is a light worker trainer. Is he's training some people to be light workers that didn't know what light workers were. In their area, they will become leaders. Mm -hmm. That's why I've been channeling all over the world. Is the people that I talk to have children or are themselves becoming light workers like all of a sudden, they're, they're enlightened. I talked to someone in Toronto who's a 21-year-old. He just saw a flying saucer, but not only did he see a flying saucer, it gave him something. It fly, flew over, and from that moment, he was different, and he didn't understand it until Lakesh told him that he gave them an orb in his stomach 
a golden orb that and he's just full of love and light and now he's going bringing all these people together in in uh, in light work and connecting people together and these are the kinds of people that Lakesh seems to draw are the ones that need training a little training on what to do for the next step of their their destiny and their 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 because all of a sudden they're enlightened and it's like where did that come from? <laughs> you know? But it is happening. And people will be leaders and uh, start little things like what we have right here for uh, to reach out into the community to show light to others, you know? <coughs> and whereas there's nothing in their area, Saskatchewan, the guy in Saskatchewan, there is nothing around him at all that's light worker, metaphysical, nothing. He's just a, a retired school teacher that got enlightened and wanted to talk to Lakesh. And Lakesh told him that he was going to be the leader in that community to reach out and connect them together. To, this is how he's working. He's drawing the people to him that need to be connected to, to be leaders in their area. So, and they're in remote areas that I'm getting calls from. They're probably perfectly placed for any kind of upheaval that takes place in the next 13 years. Uh, and, <laughs> and it's just very interesting that all of a sudden they have an awareness that they need to do something and they're not sure what it is. And Lakesh is feeding them information on how to grow and build their spirit and move out into the community and, and connect people. So... That's definitely happening. Yes. Uh, so you may have experienced it yourself where you're running into people and you kind of feel like you've known them for the longest time or maybe you even just had one singular intense conversation that impacts every fiber of your being. You know what I'm talking about. You meet somebody once and something happens and then it's over and you never see him again, but you are like an octave higher than you were before. Right. And, and here's Carol here today. She doesn't know anything about this going on today. However... There was something there that drew you in, correct? Mm -hmm. And now, what do you think now? I'm not as confused as I was before I got here. <laughs> uh, a lot of the stuff, when you break it down to me, is I have some type of understanding about it. Good. Um, so I'll be, I'll be asking a whole lot of questions, and I'm, I'm not trying to seem ignorant when I ask no, 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 or no, anything no, no. like that. But one of the things that's, 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 that's appears to me right now is that I under, and, and I'm trying to find a way to, to say it without, I don't, I'm just going to say it. What is the purpose of knowing your, your, your lineage? I understand in, in human form what's the purpose of knowing my, my lineage. Mm -hmm. well, what difference does it make? I don't even know the words. You said hybrid this and half hybrid that and mm -hmm. injection. And what people <laughs> wanted, the thing is, uh -huh. uh, people were encouraged by that. Not everybody is. But some people get encouragement from knowing that they have support from from the aliens, so and f and they have their actually relatives to them in some ways, so that you know the move forward is actually easier for them, knowing that. And plus the fact when you do have hybrid in you, mm -hmm. some of that comes out in your thinking, some of that comes out in your physiology, some of that comes out in your emotions mm -hmm. because they are different. They're different than so us. Are you aspiring to get back there in your dimensions when you're, you know, like... You're aspiring okay. just to be the perfect you. And you know what? Okay. You already are. You already are the perfect you, except you just are growing and becoming even the bigger perfect you. So, mm -hmm. um, we're all perfect in our intent. I, I believe that we, were, we are spirits that are in a, a, a physical body. Mm -hmm. And that spirit is perfect. I believe that too. Yeah. That spirit is absolutely perfect and it's eternal and it goes it goes beyond this lifetime and it was existed beyond this before this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that's the part that's perfect. We're just trying to build that. <clears throat> We're trying to let everybody see that. Not everybody believes that. Bringing the awareness, I think, to people. Right. Who don't so, have it. and sometimes that knowing that you're mm -hmm. part of that helps you open up to, you know, the things that you're afraid of in this world. And, and actually, some people are very shy and 
and demure, and they don't want to go out into the community and say, hey, I'm a shiny light, you know. Um, but yet, it, in some ways, we have to, to like, connect like, together. Explain that. You do have the term shiny light. What does that mean? Um, that mean for me, it means like you're, you're just, you're full of love, and it, other people can see it. But you are light. Every single but every one, one of us, us is light, yeah. It's, we're all compact light and, and sound. It's That's all right. vibrational. But because we're, we're thick, we, we don't vibrate as, like a rock vibrates very slowly. But it vibrates. Mm -hmm. It's all light and sound. Exactly. So when you are the light, and you're, you're kind of... Uh, acknowledging your your divinity, you know, because that's really what's in you. When the, when the body dies, when the body when the vessel is gone, you're you're pure light. You're back in spirit, and that's yep. your true and you form. Want, you want others to see that too. Because so. my confusion is, I believe God made all this. Now, I'm I'm thinking from an earthly specific perspective. Sure. Because all this other stuff is new to me. Mm -hmm. So when you're from Australia and you're from here and you're from South America and all that. I can see you saying my lineage. Well, now, now you come to America, now you're looking for your lineage. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the dimensions and you want to know, like he gave me a label, something, I don't remember what it was, something. Blue oh, blues. Blue Pleiadian. The blues. Blue Pleiadian, yeah. Is that a certain place? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Certain race, yes. It's oh, a certain okay. race, yes. All right, well now I understand it. Yeah, bit. the Blue Pleiadian are very advanced. Actually. Yeah, he said it's not genetic, it's mm -hmm. not that you had past lives, but in your past life, sometime in, you know, he said middle centuries or something like that, you have been visited by blues. So you had a connection. This so what do they look like? Oh, Jim knows well. Oh, the blues, well, Rakesh is blue. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's sort of uh, short. Mm -hmm. He's roundish mm -hmm. and blue mm -hmm. and very proud of it. And he has a, he looks like a gingerbread man a little bit. Okay. <laughs> he sort of has short arms and short legs, and he only has uh, a thumb and four fingers and, a, and toes with uh, a big toe and four toes, three toes. So they look a little different, but they're, they're bipedal, they stand on two feet, mm -hmm. but he doesn't. He's from, um, he has a lot of prestige and what... And um, he's gained a, a lot of, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? He's privileged. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't choose to walk. He can fly through the air. So. <laughs> do they have certain traits that they all have? Yeah, I would imagine they do. They all have the telepathy. They all have the, um, the fourth dimension. They all have, um, they all, um, they are all... From what I can understand from what he told me about their society, is they're very much party people. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they have a party for everything. Like if you gr graduate from a, a curriculum or a high school or have a birthday or anything, they're always celebrating. Mm -hmm. But the, the meanings of the celebrations are several fold. It's not that they're just celebrating this happening, but they, it's the one time they wear clothes. They wear clothes to celebration because this will remind them of something else. They will ask questions about your jewelry. They will ask quite. They ask each other questions about what they're wearing, and so this takes them on a discussion of their past lives. It takes them on a discussion of their lineage, mm -hmm. like that you said. It takes them on discussions of their friends and experiences that were great in their life, experiences that changed their life. See, because otherwise they, they don't really wear much clothing. I think they wear just something very small. But during their celebrations they wear lots of clothing and jewelry so that people will ask them questions about what they're wearing and what they're... And so this takes them on journeys and stories that they can learn more about each other and their paths and where they're going in the future and their personalities. And so their celebrations bring them together really a lot more than anything else. I have one more question and then I'll be quiet. No, no you're good, you're good. Nice questions. Um, so we yeah. have the dimensions. Yep. Earth is the furthest. Which way am I trying to go? 
You know? <laughs> Where, I mean, because if, if I have a lineage, that means I was there before. Or my spirit was there before. Yeah, in the past. In the past. So, no, just so you said that you, you are not from the blues. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. genetically, not spiritually, but in your past life on earth, you had a visitation. You have oh, been had a, visitation. a visitor yeah. from the you, you had, had a friends friend. that were you have connections to the blues because some of them were your friends. I see. Okay. So, um, but you're not trying to reconnect with your friendship necessarily, mm -hmm. but you're just trying to help yourself move forward and have a better life and be happy and help those around you be happy and mm -hmm. share the light and. Bring us, bring each other through problems like we do, except in a much higher way. Does that make sense? So, so if you had, if you were here prior, which we all were here prior, mm -hmm. right? That's what this is yeah. all about, right? Yeah. And you were say at a seventh dimension, the reason why you would come back to Earth in a physical body mm -hmm. is to experience it. Well, yes. everybody, everybody learns different things in different lifetimes mm -hmm. until. You don't really have to come back here anymore. You can go somewhere else. But, um, or you can stay as a spirit guide, or there's other things you can do. It's, mm -hmm. it's endless, you know what I mean? Okay. With the, the different kinds of things oh. you can do. Okay. Um, but to come back to this life is to learn things so that whenever you, you're heading out into the spirit world, your knowledge of how to... Uh, relate to other species or relate to other people or relate to other spirits has been enhanced. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, Everything I is mm -hmm. an enhancement of the spirit. So you go out from this life more enhanced learning these, these more things than you knew before so that you can take them to the next life or wherever you need to go to enlighten others. So. So what happens here hasn't necessarily already happened. Right. Okay. Well, let me comment on, on Atlantean story. So <laughs> it comes from, uh, so it's all about reincarnations. And we know that we reincarnate, sort of. We have a lot of proofs, and uh, the best proofs come from children who have no knowledge of the places where they live before from Thanks this life, but... My, but okay. from the for from the past life, they can describe their names and their families and the surroundings. And there are researchers who went after these descriptions and discovered that yes, it was true that people remember their, the children remember their true lives in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so not only that, apparently we we reincarnate as groups, <coughs> and um, we incarnate as groups of people. And sometimes people have been married or have been have family relations like the grandfather, granddaughter, and they can switch places, they can be any like best friends or best enemies or boss uh, and subordinate, things like that. But we reincarnate in groups, we kind of replay the scenarios in one way or another in different yes. lives. I want to know what life I knew you in before this one. <laughs> Let me see. Um, anybody, you have an answer? What? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Well, how Jim and I were in the past life? Yes, I mean, that's why I wanted to talk to Carol, because Carol does past life. I feel like Sandy. you... Uh, Sandy, Sandy, this is Carol. Uh, Sandy, you were, Sandy. Jim, you were either a daughter or granddaughter of mine. I was a daughter or a granddaughter of yours. Yeah, I feel like... I, that's my relationship to you. I feel like you are my granddaughter. Oh, let's find that out. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's how I feel you, at least. But it really feels like those of us that are, are really... Like, my soul group is really coming together quickly. We've Good. got more than just a couple of us, and... Some of us have been practicing certain ceremonies and doing healing work together, so we're all seem to be coming, and new mm -hmm. people are coming, and that's very interesting because, from what I understand, the monad is twelve, and they have twelve, and that's really where the one forty-four number comes. Yeah. We have a group of souls, our soul group, and that's twelve. Uh -huh. They have another soul group of their own, and that's twelve, and so on until one forty-four, and that's where that number comes from. But if you here on this planet right now. Most of us, a lot of us, have been on the earth during times of great chant transition, and we've done this before, mm -hmm. um, to push the ages forward, to protect the children, to make sure that we can evolve as much as possible. It happened in the Renaissance, when we came out of the Dark Ages. Um, it's happened at least four times, at least four cycles of almost 26,000 years. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been here for a very long time. As oh, far yes. as I'm concerned, it's time to get off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, um, you're here 
to just be yourself yep and just expand but just be in your beautiful yes. self that's be, all you yes. got to do some of us yes. just can't some of us just i don't know yeah just can't it's tough it. <laughs> can't just can't just be some yes. of us just can't be but i think that there are reasons why some of us are going to be more prominent and out there for other reasons yes right you know exactly so one of the things that mostly comes from Bashar and Metatron is that we, uh, we the, one of the biggest uh, disasters on Earth was the, the destruction of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. uh, Bashar says about 23,000 years ago uh, there was a civil war, aliens were involved, and Atlantis was destroyed, and it was a, well, the, the highest point of, point of civilization, at least the highest point of technical civilization on Earth then when they almost made it into next dimension up and they failed in a big way they destroyed civilization almost to nothing and we have we had to start over and it was a dark age until about the egyptian times when it kind of came back mm -hmm. egyptian and assyrian times mm -hmm. but the souls which had a country there there was atlantis which was a country pretty military and they, they had genetic engineering in a big way they it's a big story but they had lots of technologies including free energy and genetic engineering and created soldiers slaves and they improved themselves genetically we are we are at about the same stage where we are playing with the same technologies and then they, they failed destroying themselves in a, in, in a war now the same group of souls incarnates here now and the United States, as Bashar says, is the most closest copy to Atlantis. It's not only the, uh, the people, it's the whole structure is replayed again. We have another chance of getting it right. So we, we kind of replay the same scenario of coming close to self-destruction. And 90s was the time when parallel timelines, it was a split in the timeline, there was a scenario when we did, did destroy ourselves. So in our parallel timelines, we already did. But we are here now on a line where the chances of us destroying ourselves is a way smaller, way yes. smaller. Less. We are yes. we are lucky. We already passed few forks where we succeeded not to destroy ourselves with the help from above. So that is the story of uh, you know why we are playing this strange thing. That's about the karma. So the karma is we are playing the same scenario, but now we have a chance to make it right. About why we it, the lineage is important for me, it was very clear that I fall out of the uh, any group of people in Russia, Jews, Americans, you know, any sort of religious. I feel okay in the scientific lab because you know that's the closest where I feel like at home. But but still, I feel very you know the scientific meetings again. I have to stand out of the room with the meeting. I stand in the door because just the energy is not right on any meeting. I feel drained at any meeting, big meeting. So and also I had dreams about flying and saying to my friends, "Hey, look, I'm flying above you." I'm, and and I do that you know to this day very often. Almost every every week I have that dream that I'm flying and sneaking somewhere or taking advantage of you know cutting cutting the line just because I can fly. So uh, I was thinking that I am uh, a gray because grays I thought you know can fly. Now Lakesh says they are gliding, so I think maybe I have connection to to the blues, which I don't think they confirmed. Uh, and, now, and then some negative Pleiadians called Renegades, I didn't trust them, they, they, was, they, they were advanced, but they, there was some negativity. They told, told me that I am large percent Pleiadian genetically, and I didn't believe them. Now I hear it from Lakesh and from all other friends, so it kind of comes together. I accept that because it's, you know, among my group, this group of people and online, most of us have that Pleiadian heritage. And, my percentage was like 21%, which is pretty high, coming from, you know, father line down the ages and mother line down, down the ages. Somewhere there, there was a big infusion in my lineage. And it's not very frequent on average on Earth, it's less than 1% have Pleiadians, but recent Pleiadian infusions. We have ancient Pleiadians where 
it's like thousands of years ago they were uh, refugees coming here to live and they kind of gave rise, rise to some of the tribes and they mixed together so all humans or all, all humans have Pleiadian and Syrian and other heritage of aliens but but now there are recent infusions that's what we are talking about so that was one helpful thing and another thing helpful thing you know it's, it's so great to have more children up there uh, I you know I'm very happy to have two and for, for others you know I, I have four here of my own and two so I, I'm a happy father and I also after I asked about that I have the chance to talk to them and now when I meditate I invite them to come through and I have I feel their presence as some sort of light pattern. Uh, so for for others who, who don't have children here, knowing that they have children up there is a great happiness. You know, for humans it's very important to have children and uh, that connection. They're like lonely here and now they're not so lonely. So it, it is a big thing. Um, they won't tell me if I'm hybrid or not. They've never, We I think we've asked a couple times, they won't they don't tell me what I am. They don't tell me what I am. It's interesting because I believe that information belongs to you. Why? They, what? they have, but Safira, the lady that was online, told was told by a psychic that I am, a, I am a spirit that did not have to incarnate again, but I came here to help the earth. Dolores Cannon calls them a volunteers. Mm. Yeah. Volunteers. I was one of the, I was a volunteer <clears throat> to come to Earth to help the cause. So Dominic so. didn't need to come here either. Yeah, we were told by a medium that this would, he he, he just had to come back. He had to said, come back for his group, I think, but mm -hmm. he didn't. He there's he's already ascended pretty much. Right. <laughs> so and that was a she was told that I came back to help mankind, but that I did not need to learn anything in this lifetime. I was like, boy, but I'm learning so much. So, <laughs> but it's probably stuff that it, she said that you already knew. You're just reacquainting yourself with it. So. Yeah, because we'll, you have, don't to, remember we'll have to talk because some of the information the class gave me is some different information, and I, I'm not disagreeing with it. But I, um, I, it was my understanding that after we fell, that humanity had, humanity had been tampered with a little bit, so they had the capacity to evolve, and the pineal gland was inserted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Joe's genetic experiments took place because we were, after we fell, we were very primitive. Mm -hmm. um, and that happened with Atlantis, at that Atlantis time frame. Um, you know, who's to say if that's true? Um, what did he say? <laughs> I was told, well, it was told that they, the Galactic Councils, had basically created the Hugh man, the Hugh meaning God. Yep. Um, but that the Gen X came from Arcturus, mm -hmm. um, Sirius, mm -hmm. uh, Lyra, which was mm -hmm. the Lyra and Stargate, which is the 12th dimension. Right. So you had asked about the 12th dimension. We have that capacity, the 7 to 12. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we get to 13, we really lose form. But you both had said it. We just, as we go from 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, we become more light. I, I think he said something about the first seven that were within human understanding. So. Sure, but um, that we had been created, um, mm -hmm. that the human to, the, the human, the human that had been created from the Galactic Councils was supposed to mate with the fallen human, so genetically they could, you know, create a being that mm -hmm. could transverse all the dimensions when the DNA had been activated after four cycles of 26,000 years. And that's why so many volunteers from the stars came, mm -hmm. because they wanted that capacity to do that. So they left their places and came here. So you asked about lineage. Lineage, well, if you're, if you're directly from a star system and, and your soul has that coding from where you are, like the Lyrans or the Lyrans, they can do dream time. They know how to change the filaments on a, on a global, universal basis because they understand color and, and they can sing songs of creation. I mean, they're very, very advanced. Pleiadians have all kinds of things and they're earth keepers and they're animal lovers and they're more oh, about yeah. peace, love, and harmony. And that's, yeah, that's something, that you know, that's something that could be um, something you might notice in yourself. The Syrians are, a fifth dimensional 
species and they bring their own stamens. If the Alpha Centurions wouldn't contribute to the gene pool, and that's where I was told I was from. Alpha Centauri. Oh, really? Alpha Centauri. But basically, no. so, uh, <laughs> well, the way that Lokesh answered it, it seemed to me that there was more to it, but he wasn't going to get into it. I want to pursue that with you later because okay. there is some. The reason yeah, he doesn't did, give all the information. Well, you know, okay. So, well, we'll see what he says. If, you, if, if I have more information, then I don't need to ask him. Okay. So, my, my higher self is Centurion, too. Well, you know what you can do with your mind, yes? No. Alpha Centaurians, the major reason they did not contribute to the human is because of their capacity to think beyond what is thought possible. And they knew that the human species did not have the capacity to handle that. Okay. So they have been sending us energy too. Like I understand the Andromedans have a lot to do with what's coming through the galactic core right now and that they've really been pushing it. But last year, actually starting in 2012, there were transmissions from Alpha Centauri that um, had started affecting the people that have Alpha Centaurian genes in them. So you might be affected too. I don't too. have genes. I have well, not genes, but your soul has that experience. Yeah. So you. Yeah should be able to go into a, a thought pattern, a, a belief, maybe it's no here on earth and you said no, 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 it's not no because they haven't explored it over here. Alpha Centaurians can really do things with their mind, bend time, they can create certain things. It might be something that you might find interesting to pursue. All right. Yeah. Okay, it's time to stop. Oh, yeah. Goodbye everybody. Going. Thank you <laughs> and blessed be your path. Thank you. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your questions. We should. I want to remember.